What's up, Ocean? You got Match here, and welcome to another tier list video. Today, we are talking about the best Pokemon in the Hoenn region, all the best Gen 3 Pokemon. So, if you guys are excited, make sure to leave a like on the video, comment your thoughts on these Gen 3 Pokemon down below. Let me know which tier list suggestions you have for me next time. I don't want to always do the, uh, the generations, I want to move on to other things as well. I'm going to wait to do the types until the release of Scarlet and Violet, which is coming up in like 10 days. So, if you guys are excited, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and let's go ahead and jump on into it. Now, as always, we have the amazing, great, solid, below average, bad, bad NFEs and LC Mons. NFEs, for those who don't know, are not fully evolved Pokemon. So we're going to go ahead and jump, just jump into it. Starting off with the starters, the baby starters we have, they are going to be in the LC Mons. Uh, having Overgrow and Unburden on Trico is cool. Having Speed Boost on Torchic is nice. At least it actually gets banned in a little cup, if I'm not mistaken. And Mudkip is just... Um, well, it's 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 fine. It's it's fine. Um, I don't think it's that good in LC at all. Uh, then we have Grovile, bad NFP. Also, um, actually, I think this is the only one of the of the second stage or the first stage Pokemon rather. That I'm gonna put into the bad NFP tier. So I'm gonna keep it there for now. Uh, then we got Sceptile. Sceptile, I think, is below average. It obviously is one of the coolest designs out there. I think all the designs in Gen 3 are really cool. But having a Pokemon like Sceptile, which is just not as imposing uh, without Unburden is kind of interesting. I think obviously it's Mega, it's it a lot better. I think it's Mega is actually going to be solid. Uh, if we're looking back at previous generations in Gen 7, it's Mega was just fine. Having Lightning Rod for doubles is great and everything, but for singles, it's not that big of a deal. It's got a buff in its attack and a buff in its uh, speed, which is nice, but it just, it misses out on a lot, I think. And I think that the fact that it relies a lot on Earthquake is the only way to hit Steel types, I think is, well, I guess you get Drain Punch as well, but you get the point I'm trying to make. It's just not as good. There are better options to have, and it's typing is a bit to be desired in my mind at, at uh, Grass and Dragon. Next up is going to be the Combusking. I think Combusking is bad. Um, it, it's like... Is it terrible? No. Is it like bad in the context of like it's a tier five Pokemon or a really low rated Pokemon, like a four, three, two, one Pokemon in draft league? Um, yes, is a Pokemon that's gonna see a lot of play in something like a PU or NU? I, I guess so, but it's just not gonna be uh, anything that you're gonna consider in the OU tier at all. Uh, it's a Pokemon that has speed boost, which is nice if that is allowed in your metagames, of course, and has access to ways to boost up its attack with bulk up and with Swords Dance, which is solid as well. Blaziken, I think Blaziken is actually gonna be in the solid tier. I think it's actually above the Mega Sceptile. Having access to U-Turn now, 80 base speed, 120 attack, 110 special attack is really solid, of course. Uh, and it gets speed boost as well. If it gets speed boost, which you know what, I'll say this thing has speed boost. I'll put speed boost Blaziken in the amazing tier. Also, I'm going to put speed boost Mega Blaziken. But here's the kicker. I think that speed boost Blaziken is better than speed boost Mega Blaziken. Why? Items. I really value holding an item in Pokemon, in competitive Pokemon especially. Having access to an item is really, really important. You want to make sure that you're able to uh, get an item uh, to boost your attack or to boost your defenses or to take a random hit you wouldn't be able to do before. All these things could be really important or to, to get around, I don't know, um, uh, sticky web with boots or whatever, or rocks or spikes. It's just really important and has a good amount of utility. I think I'd rather have that than a Mega Blaziken. Next is going to be Marsh Chomp. I think Marsh Chomp is better than uh, Combusken. It's still bad, but it is just a solid Pokemon for what it does. It, like it, it's, it's a ground type, which is nice. It gets access to rocks and it gets access to uh, Yawn and stuff. That's really it. Doesn't get flip turn. If it got flip turn, it'd be really good. I think it'd be below average, honestly. But still, it is a solid Pokemon overall. Even though, again, the solid tier. I say solid as an adjective, not to describe the tier that it's in. I apologize for the confusion, but I think it is in the bad tier, but a solid Pokemon for where it would be in a competitive Pokemon sense. Next up is Swampert. I think Swampert is great. The first Pokemon in the great tier. I really like Swampert. Having access to Flip Turn, which is amazing. A slow Flip Turn at that of 60 base speed is great. Having access to a one weakness only in Grass, which is one of the easiest types to counter, is really nice, of course. I mean, just pair it with literally any other starter Pokemon on this team. You have access to an amazing re immunity, or resist rather, in uh, Sceptile or Mega Sceptile, or an amazing check to it in Blaziken or Mega Blaziken. So, yeah, I think it's really solid here. Having access to rocks is great. Having access to, um, what is it called? Flip turn, earthquake, liquidation, yawn, ice punch, sludge wave, all these things, really good. Next up is Mega Swampert. I think Mega Swampert, if you're pairing without rain, it's uh, solid. But if you're pairing it with rain, it's in the great tier. I think having access to rain with Mega Swampert is amazing. It's one of the best uh, rain abusers out there. I think it's better than Kingdra, to be honest, because the flip turn now it gets, because of liquidation, earthquake, again, the coverage it gets is really nice. And it just forces so many switch ins. Then we have Puchiena. LC, Mighty Yana is bad. I think Mighty Yana, the biggest advantage to it is its coverage. It has really good coverage, but its stats are just absolute dog shit. Really, really bad. Uh, next up is going to be Zigzagoon, and I guess the uh, this is Galar Zigzagoon too. We'll put that there. Light Noon. With extreme speed, it is below average. Uh, but Belly Drum with extreme speed is a, is really good. It's a great set to have. It's got decent coverage as well, like Seed Bomb and Shadow Claw and like Stomping Tantrum too, which is cool. Uh, but it's just hard to get going and it's pretty frail too. And if you have like an answer, like a good ghost type that can uh, outspeed it, then you're in a tough spot as well. It gets Gluttony too, which could be good for certain situations because you get your speed boost off. You can Gluttony to get your, your boost. 
uh, your HP back to basically full, which is really useful as well. Next up is Galar Linoon, which is uh, bad. Uh, this Pokemon does not get Belly Drum, I believe it is, or does not get Strength. It's one of the two. And uh, the fact that it doesn't get that is the reason why Linoon is in the below average tier and on the bad tier. So, yeah. Then we got the LC Mons, uh, bad. We got bad NFE. We got bad NFE. We got uh, a lot of a lot of bad Pokemon there. But then we have Beautifly, which is just plain bad. This Pokemon doesn't do a lot for a team. I'd rather have Butterfree in every every single situation. Uh, I don't think this thing gets Quiver Dance, if I'm mistaken. Uh, I should double check that to make sure. But let's go Beautifly, which uh, it doesn't even come in this generation. But Quiver Dance, it does get Quiver Dance, which is, just, which is fine. But uh, the rest of its moves are, again, really not that impressive. And its stats are just, they're just terrible. Its highest stat, other than its special attack, is base 70. It's got 100 special attack and then 70 and below and everything else. Really bad. Uh, Dust Hawks is also just bad, but I think it's actually slightly better than uh, than the Beautifly because it is a grounded poison type, which is really useful to have in competitive Pokemon. Uh, next up is going to be Lotad in the bad tier. We're going to, or bad, the LC Mons. Lombre in the bad NFEs. We're going to put C Dot over here and Nuzleaf up here. And we have the Ludicolo, which in Rain is good. It's good to have. It's like, I think it's below average. Actually, I think it's above the Sceptile, to be honest, because Rain, this Pokemon is a really good answer to opposing Rain because it's a four-tenth resist to water and can just like Giga Drain them back and get the KO on them, which is really good. So if you're worried about Rain, having Ludicolo on your roster could be really nice as well. Uh, it also gets Bake Out for doubles too, which could be really cool. Having Nuzleaf, Nuzleaf, not Nuzleaf, what's this called? Shiftry. Shiftry, I think, is just bad. Uh, its typing is cool uh, with Grass and with Dark. It has an immunity to Psychic. I just think that overall, it just does not do enough ever, and its moves are not that good. Uh, I just rather have like literally any other Dark type on my roster than something like a Shiftry, even though it does get some like Hurricane as well. And I believe Lee Storm too. Uh, next up, Taylo in the LC Mons. Probably put it at the top because uh, it's a pretty good Pokemon Little Cup. Uh, Swellow, I think Swellow is solid. Uh, 125 base speed, I believe it is. U turn, facade, uh, access to Brave Bird still. Having access to Steel Wing for rock types. Having access to uh, Boom Burst with the uh, spec set with Scrappy is really good too. It's, uh, it's really solid overall for what it does. Uh, the speed is great and can run two really good offensive sets that your opponent has to be prepared for. And if they prepare for the wrong one, then you'll just lose the game, really. That's the main thing. Uh, Wingle going to the bat here, but this is actually near the top of bat, uh, of the Little Cup rather. It's one of the best Little Cup Pokemon out there. Pelipper, I think Pelipper is great. It has to go into great tier because of rain. That's the reason why. As a Pokemon without rain, I would put it into the below average tier. But with rain, it kind of gets forced up quite a few notches. And like you kind of see the, the the trend with Hoenn. Hoenn has a lot of just rain and weather abusers. And uh, yeah, that's not really what I like to build around anymore. I used to kind of like to have rain, but not anymore. It's just too expensive nowadays in terms of draft league. And it just doesn't get the job done enough in my eyes in terms of uh, smoke on in terms of doubles. I see the appeal for it. I just think that the games are in over too quickly and having protect as well to stall them out could be really advantageous too. As well as double targeting could be really scary as well. Uh, next up is going to be uh, LC Mons. We have Ralts over here, which does basically nothing. We have Curlia in the Bat NFEs. Gardevoir will be in the solid tier. I think Gardevoir is actually better than... I'd put better than Swellow. Uh, Gardevoir, again, speed, 80 base speed is fine. Having access to solid coverage options like Moonblast, Psyshock, Mystical Fire, Focus Blast, Shadow Ball. All really nice. I just think the issue with it is its speed tier is a bit too slow for it to be considered to be anything higher than the, the solid tier. Next up is going to be Mega Gardevoir, which will go straight into the great tier. I think Mega Gardevoir is actually better than Swampert. Um, this Pokemon has access to Hyper Voice with Pixelate, which I know that I believe there was a nerf uh, in this generation or in the previous generation, which weakens it, but it's still really good having access to still Mystical Fire, Shadow Ball, access to Focus Blast. All have a lot of good utility. There are very few switches to Gardevoir, and the boost in speed to 100 is really, really good. If this thing got even to 101 base speed, I think it'd be even better. I would probably went to the amazing tier if it got one more point in speed, just one, but it'll stay here for now in great. Next up is going to be Surskit, LC, Shroomish, LC, Masquerade, um, Masquerade, excuse me, Masquerade, I'll put into the bad tier. The only reason you draft Masquerade is for webs. That's it. I've drafted it before. It does get webs. It gets Quiver Dance as well. It gets access to like Hydro Pump and stuff like that, which is cool. I just think that the main focus on it is going to be, of course, the webs. That's really it. Uh, and that's okay, but it's just a utility Pokemon to have. Next up is Breloom. Oh, I miss Breloom. I think Breloom is great. Having access to Spore is amazing. Obviously, Spore is like one of the best moves out there. Uh, having access to Technician Mock Punch, Technician Bullet Seed, Technician Rock Tomb, really good. And what's going to happen in the next generation, we have a new item. I believe it's the Lucky Dice or something like that, or I, whichever item it is. That basically means that all the moves that you go for that are like consecutive moves, they're basically going to be guaranteed to hit five times. That's basically what it's going to be. So I think Bullet Seed is going to hit every single time at a Technician boosted damage. That's insane. That's insanely good. Having access to uh, Swords Dance, but that's two, really strong as well. There's just a lot that Breloom can do. And if you are if you have a team that's slow, Breloom will eat you alive. Just count on it. It's really solid there. I'll put it actually, uh, I'll put it like this in my mind. Actually, I'll put it like this. I never drafted it, but I really would like to. And I miss it. I miss Breloom. 
Next up is going to be Slackoth sitting in the LC. Vigoroth, I'm going to put into the bad tier. And Slacking, I'm going to put into the below average tier. So Slacking, I think, has more utility as a defense Pokemon, as a bulky Pokemon, rather than a breaker because of Truant or, uh, yeah, because of Truant. I believe it had Slow Star in like a ROM hack I was in or something like that. I'm not sure if it even gets Slow Star anymore. I should double check that. Uh, Slacking. Slacking gets, uh, yeah, only Truant. So I'm... I'm not in love with slacking, but having it as a bulky Pokemon is fine. Actually, you know what? No, Truant is just so terrible. I'm going to just say fucking put it into bad. Uh, I would never draft it. I would never pick it up. I would never use it on a team unless I was like in doubles. I had a way to kind of like negate the Truant, obviously, because it's got really good stats. But um, imagine neutralizing Gasp slacking instead of neutralizing Gasp with Regigigas. Wow, that'd be absolutely insane. That'd be crazy. Uh, Ninkata is up next over here. Uh, next, we have bad Pokemon in the Ninjas and also a bad Pokemon in the Shedinja. Um, Ninjask has access to speed boost in, in a, in a format that I was in, that was a, what was it? It was, it was low tier Pokemon only, but like mid tier Pokemon. Only. So like I was allowed to use, uh, I think Ninjask was like one of my best Pokemon out there. It was fantastic. I actually didn't die in a single season I had with it and we won the title. However, the issue I have with Ninjask is it's really weak and it kind of has some boots all the time, which is not what you really want to do with it all the time. Uh, which is, it's fine. It is what it is. But I do think that at the end of the day, uh, what Ninjask does for a team is is good enough. It gets the job done. And I'm cool with it. Uh, next up is Shedinja, though. Shedinja is, again, there, there's so much to be desired with this Pokemon. One base, one HP. That's it. Just one. But you can Sword Dance up. You can click Shadow Sneak. It's nice. It, it forces prep, which is good because it means your opponent has to have everything on their team able to hit Shedinja or else they won't be able to beat it 1v1. It can just set up, which is cool. But uh, that is important to note. You have to have a way to get this thing in freely. So you might have to run Boots, or you have to run Sash, or you have to run one of those items like that to be able to always uh, take at least one hidden setup if you're in a really tough situation. Next up, we're going to see Wismer goes over here. We're going to put the, the Loudred into Banded Feast, and then we're going to put Loudred into the Below Average, at the top of Below Average, I think. Uh, this Pokemon has, again, Scrappy with Boomer, same as Swellow. It's just slower is the problem. Uh, it is more specially offensive, which is a good thing. It has really good coverage like Fire Blast and Surf and Thunderbolt and whatnot. Uh, but I think that it just misses a good bit of things to kind of make it elite, which is the problem with it. But I'll keep it over here in the below average tier. Next up is Makuhita and the Hariyama. Hariyama will go into below average as well. I'll put Hariyama... Uh, I'll put Hariyama, Hariyama like this. I think Hariyama with Fake Out is good. With Thick Fat is nice. Having decent coverage, Earthquake and Fighting Moves is always solid as well. Uh, Rock Slide gets access to, I believe, uh, Iron Head and Poison Jab now. I think it gets Iron Head. Either, and it gets Heavy Slam for sure, I know that. But it, these are ways I can counter the fairy types in the format, which is nice. But it just misses out on a lot because it's a slow, slow Pokemon. It's not as bulky as you think. It's just deceptive. It's just really fat in terms of its HP stat. But its defenses are really not good. If I pull it up right now, Hariyama. Hariyama has uh, 144 HP and 60 in both defenses. So not great. Not great in terms of defenses. And fighting is not a good bulky type at all. Uh, I think it's just really, really a worse um, Conkeldur. That's the main thing. Next up is going to be Azuril, which I'll put over here in the baby Pokemon tier with Nose Pass. I'll put Nose Pass to Bat and FE. Uh, no, Nose Pass will be into LC. I think I've seen Nose Pass in LC. It does, it does work in LC. Uh, Skitty will be into the near the bottom of this tier for sure. Uh, with Delcaddy in Bad, at the bottom of Bad. This Pokemon is terrible. It's got one of the worst abilities in the game in Normalize. This Pokemon takes has this Pokemon has good coverage. It takes all that coverage and makes it normal. One of the worst types in the game in terms of an attacking standpoint. Why? Why? But hey, it is here. We'll put it to the bats here. It definitely, something had to be this low and it's going to be Delcaddy. Sableye is going to be below average. I think Sableye, uh, having Prankster is really, really advantageous for it. Uh, one of the best abilities in the game, of course, with knockoff support and fake out for the uh, double side, having access, I believe it gets uh, fake out. I should double check that it gets, uh, it gets access to fake out. It's been a while since I played with Sableye. Uh, Sableye with fake out. Yeah, it does get fake out. Um, but the main, the main aspect to it is it gets access to Encore. It gets access to moves like knockoff, of course. It gets access to recover with priority, taunt with priority. All of them are really good. will o with priority, really good. Uh, then there is going to be Mega Sableye, which is insanely bulky. I'm going to put actually up into the great tier. The issue with this Pokemon is you can't taunt it, okay? Unless you're like running Mold Breaker or something like that. So you're kind of just sitting there waiting for it to just die. And the issue is, unless you're doing enough damage back to it to force it to eventually recover and you get a crit maybe, or you're able to just set up alongside of it, you're going to have a really hard time breaking through Mega Sableye. And I think if you don't have a, a ghost type, or sorry, a, a normal type rather, or a uh, fighting type, you're going to have a really hard time dealing with Sableye. And the reason I say normal and fighting is because defensively it forces them to run um, uh, Shadow Ball or Dark Pulse or both. And then you can just calm mind up a bunch and you can try and set up alongside of it, but it can taunt you too and it can recover up and it can just, it's not a good, it's not a good time. That's really the main thing with the Mega Sableye. Annoying as Pokemon install. Next up is going to be Mawile, which will be in the bad, uh, it's near the top of bad, I think. 
because it gets access to Intimidate. It's got Steel and Fairy as it's typing. It's really good typing overall, same as Magirna, but it's just uh, it just misses something. And what it misses is huge power, and that's what Mega Mawile does. I think Mega Mawile uh, is going to be in the amazing tier. One of the first Pokemon since Blaziken to the amazing tier. Obviously, its speed is not great, but in Trick Room, oh my god, 50 base speed with huge power knockoff, Play Rough, Iron Head, Crunch, Fire Fang. There's so many things this thing gets. It gets rocks as well. It intimidates before it comes in and then clicks its uh, its attacks and just breaks so well. I really like uh, Mawile, Mega Mawile. It's one of the few Pokemon that I really appreciate Sucker Punch on. Because Swords and Sucker Punch with Mega Mawile is really cool. But Pokemon like Bisharp, I fucking hate it. I hate it so much. But this thing here, Sucker Punch, all go with me. Next up is going to be the Aron uh, into LC, Laron into Bat and Fees. Agron will go into the... I'll put in bad. Um, I don't, I'm not a fan of the coverage of the typing rather of steel and rock. If it was steel and ground, I'd be, I'd be totally fine with it, like Steelix, but it's it's not the best coverage. It would have an electric immunity at that point as well. Uh, its coverage is fine. It's got actually really good coverage. The issue that I have with it mainly is its typing and its stat distribution is not as well as good as I would like it to be. I wish it was just like a fast steel type. That'd be kind of cool to me, but it's it's a slow steel type and that kind of is uh, obviously a change that hasn't happened in 15 years. Uh, next up is Mega Aggron, which I like a lot more. I think Mega Aggron is solid. Uh, having access to filter to reduce the damage you're taking from like uh, the the fighting moves, the ground moves, the fire moves is obviously really good. And I think dropping the rock type is a really big advantage for the Mega Aggron as well. Uh, and it can just set up so freely with so many different things. I believe it's like defense that is like 250 or something like that or 200. Uh, what is it? Aggron. A-G-G-R-O-N. It is a 230 defense, which is just insanity. It's it's insane how defensive this Pokemon is. One of my absolute favorite Pokemon to, uh, to play against when it came to competitive Pokemon in Generation 6 and 7. Uh, moving on, we're going to see the Metatite. Was it Gen 7 or Gen 6 only? Either way. Uh, next up is Metatite into the LC. Metacham will go into the below average tier. Huge power, not huge power. Pure power is really cool. Zen Headbutt, High Jump Kick. Actually, a ton of good coverage options. I see it here for sure. But even better than that is going to be Mega Metacham. Uh, the real issue with Mega Metacham is going to be its speed tier. Well, no, not Mega Metacham. Regular Metacham. Mega Metacham fixes that. 100 base speed. It is so insanely strong with access to pure power. It is crazy. I believe Metacham has like 60 base uh, def a space space attack if i look it up quickly meta cham uh, so mega meta cham has 100 base attack while regular meta cham has access to yeah 60 base attack so the difference is a three point boost in attack which is doubled because of pure power that's crazy and it's so strong having access to fighting type coverage when it's a psychic type pokemon to be well to protect against the dark types coming in is amazing the one issue with this pokemon is it has a hard time dealing with ghost type pokemon because it doesn't get access to like a dark move so he has to run like Zen Headbutt to hit it, which is like not great, obviously. The good news is it gets Baton Pass, I believe, right? Baton Pass? Uh, Baton Pass. There you go. Baton Pass. So if you pair it with a Pokemon that can really effectively deal with opposing Dark types or opposing Ghost types, then you're in a really good position. I think a good Dark type Pokemon paired with Metacham. Mega Metacham is amazing. Next up is Electrike into LC you go. Manectric will go into bad because uh, it gets Lightning Rod, but it really misses out on having him power. It really does. Uh, obviously, its speed is fine. Lightning Rod is cool and everything, but it just misses out on a lot, I think, with, uh, without the addition of hidden power. And then Mega Manectric, I think, is actually going to be in the solid tier because its speed is one of the main reasons why. I believe it's 145 base speed. Um, Manectric, it is... Oh, that's regular Manectric. Mega Manectric is going to be... Uh, 135 base speed, excuse me, with 135 special attack. Obviously, it's great. And Intimidate is an amazing ability. It's one of the best abilities in the game. Uh, it's got decent coverage in terms of uh, as a mega Pokemon. Obviously, you want to have hidden power, but it does get overheat, which is cool. And it's got Ice Fang, I guess, but that's really it. It's not going to do the job, but I think because when you pair the additional special attack, the additional speed, and the fact that it gets access to Intimidate now, so additional bulk too, I think it makes sense for it to go into the solid tier. Next up is Plus One. Mine of these Pokemon are bad in... in Doubles, sure, they can go up higher to like below average, but in singles, they are bad. Uh, Volbeat and Illumise. I think Volbeat, honestly, they're bad, but I've used Volbeat and Illumise in the past, and I, I've had a good time. I've had a good time with them. These Pokemon, they with Prankster, they get the job done. Prankster Moonlight or Morning Sun, having access to Tailwind, having access to uh, to U-turn is nice. There's just a lot of good things you can do with these Pokemon here. Sorry about that. Julia just got home. I had to let her in. Um, so I was talking about Illumise and Volbeat, and they were, they're the fine Pokemon. They have the job done as a prankster Pokemon, but that's really all they do. And that's pretty much it. Moving on is Roselia as a, uh, it's not a bad in a fee. I don't think it's bad. I think it's just below average. This is a not fully a ball Pokemon that I think is below average. That is, well, unheard of for this part of the list. Uh, I think it's a really, really below average Pokemon in terms of well, overall. But what it provides for a team is nice. It's a really good special sponge, has access to uh, toxic spikes and spikes, and being a ground poison type as well is really advantageous. I do like Roselia a lot and has really good special attack at like 100 or something, which is again, good overall. Uh, next up is going to be Gulpin over here in the LC mods. We're going to put uh, Swalot into the bad tier. I think Swalot just 
misses out on a lot. Uh, I wish I get access to uh, spikes as well and, uh, and hazard options too. I believe it gets toxic spikes. I'll double check that right now. It's been a while since I've used Swallow, obviously. Uh, toxic. It does not get toxic spikes. So yeah, toxic spikes and spikes would make this thing a lot more playable. But its uh, stats are they're fine. 100 base HP, 83 in both defenses. Its bulk is not bad at all. Next up is going to be uh, Carvana, which is going to be at the top over here in the Little Cup tier. Actually, it's worse than Wingle, but still, um, it's still a good Pokemon nonetheless in Little Cup. Sharpedo can go into the below average tier. Is that what I want to do? Below average? Yeah, below average. I think it's um, it, it misses out on a good bit here in terms of like what it's really the lead at. And that's just like it sets up in sweeps with like with a Swords Dance on Swords Dance. Uh, uh, what's it called? Speed Boost. That's the one. And with its decent offensive moves. The issue with it is it's so frail and you have to basically protect turn one to hit your speed boost off unless you're going to be speeding something right away. So it's very difficult to find out exactly how you want to play it. But I used to lush up people, my favorite Pokemon of all time. Uh, and I just think it's below average in this current metagame. Next up is going to be Mega Sharpedo, which Mega Sharpedo is going to go into solid as well. Um, I think now we have like a ton of just solid Pokemon, the uh, sorry, solid, a ton of Mega Pokemon in a solid tier. But I do think what it provides for a team is really important in terms of like a really good offensive breaker. You can just come in with Sharpedo, you don't have to Mega Ball right away, you then click a Crunch or a Liquidation or whatever Waterfall, get a KO on something, and then you Mega Evolve, you have your plus one boost in speed, and you have the 105A speed now, and you have Strong Draw on top of that, which is really nice to have with like Crunch and Psychic Fangs and stuff like that. So I like uh, Mega Sharpedo a lot. Whalmer over here, Waylord, you're going to be in bad, because you're just bad. Uh, Numal over here, Camera Ups, also in bad. Mega camera up over here, and you're gonna be in the below average tier. Our first mega and below average, yeah, first mega and below average, and the lowest mega overall. Um, obviously, having a fortress weakness to water, one of the most common attacking moves in the game, is Scald, is not great. It has really shitty speed. So in a um, in, in Trick Room, it's great and everything, but it's not always going to be in Trick Room. And having sheer force is awesome. However, Scald is all is everywhere. Okay, it just it gets outsped by so many different things. A special wall can beat it one v one. It's, it's just it's not as good as it needs to be, but I think there is some merit to drafting or having and using a Mega Camera. Next up is going to be Torkoal. It is a weather setter. I think it's going to be in the solid tier. Uh, I'd put it over here, yeah. I think having access to weather is great, but it also gets rocks and rapid spin and shell smash, so it can do those things as well. It's not just a one-trick pony, but it is very much favored to being a solid Pokemon overall. Uh, we had a long list to go still. We got Spoink and Grumpig. Spoink over here. Grumpig, bad. I don't need to tell you why. Uh, thick Pat, um, bad coverage. It's just not going to be up in the anything higher than that. Spinda is also bad. Teeter Dance, sure. This thing should get every dance move, including Quiver Dance. It doesn't. It'd be great if it did. And stats are terrible. If it's like 75 all around or something like that, or 80 all around. Is that it? Spinda? Spinda, nope, not Sobble. Spinda. Spinda is base 60 all around. Terrible. Just terrible. Trap Inch, really good in LC because of trapping and having insane attack stats. Shitty speed though. Uh, actually, no, no, I'm not gonna put an LC. I, I've seen this Pokemon get, ba get drafted in competitive, po in like drafting at high levels. I'm gonna put it into bad actually because of trapping. That's the main reason why it can trap electric types and just get the KO on them outright, which is cool. Vibrava, this is actually gonna be in bad NFT. It's ironic that I'm putting Vibrava lower than I'm putting Trap Inch. So, yeah. Either way, moving on to Flygon, we're gonna put Flygon in the. Uh, I'll put it in the solid tier. Flygon is missing something. But having access to Dragon Dance now this generation is great. Having really good coverage options on the special and physical side, like Fire Moves, Bug Buzz, Boom Burst, for example, Scorching Sands and Earth Power as well. Having access to really good physical moves on Outrage and Dragon Claw, Earthquake as well. U-Turn is great. It's got solid speed at 100, and uh, it's got really good options for um, for, for abilities in Levitate, of course. Really good here, and same time as Garchomp too. It gets Roost as well. I just don't think I can put it into the greats here because it's been like power crept really. That's the main thing. It's been crept over by other Pokemon that are ground types like Landorus and Garchomp. So why would you run Flygon when you could have something like that instead? Right? Next up is going to be Cacnea over here. Cacturn, you'll go into... I'm debating putting in below average, but I'll put it into bad. Um, it gets a dark type. It gets access to like Needle Arm, which is a cool move to have. Sucker Punch as well. It gets access to Water Absorb, which is nice. Uh, I just think that it's missing something. and stats are just not as well balanced as they really need to be. Uh, and as a grass type, again, grass is not the greatest typing. I'd rather have basically any other dark type than Cacturn, which is why I'm putting it over here in bad instead of in below average. Next up is Swablu. LC, you go. And then Altaria, you'll go into the bad tier as well. A Cloud9 is cool as well. Uh, Cotton Guard, sure. A lot of really good things going for it. The issue I have with it is it's just not offensive. It's not an offensive threat at all unlike its mega evolution mega altaria which is going to go into the great tier i absolutely love mega altaria i'll put it like this 
I love Mega Altaria. It's one of my favorite Megas out there. Fairy and Dragon is such an amazing coverage or type combination, rather. Having access to Earthquake or Fire Move with access to uh, Fairy Moves, like uh, with Pixelate, rather, with, like Double Edge or Body Slam or whatever, is great. It gets Play Rough in certain situations where you want to run Play Rough instead of running a, uh, a normal uh, Pixelate move. And having access to Dragon Moves, obviously, also really good. But it's so damn fat and has access to Roost and Cod Guard. And it had Refresh, but that's been cut from the game. But there's so many things it could do. I It's a uh, Heal Bell as well, I believe. There's a lot of good things, a lot of good ways to set up with Mega Altaria. I absolutely love this Pokemon so much. Next up is going to be Zangoose. I'll put Zangoose into the below average or bad. Um, I'll put it into below average, but the very bottom, because this thing, if it gets Swords Dance up with Toxic Boost, can just run through an entire team. It's a really solid Pokemon with that regard, but it just, it's just really hard to get that because it's not that, well, it's pretty frail. That's the issue. So Viper will go into the bad tier. I think so Viper as a Grounded Poison type, sure. Uh, it doesn't get intimidated, I believe. I think it's only in uh, in like Blaze Black and stuff that gets intimidated. So Viper gets access to Shed Skin. It gets Infiltrator. Not intimidated. Another uh, ability that starts with, uh, that starts with the IN. Wow, I cannot speak today at all. I'm struggling here. Either way, uh, it's a fine Pokemon in terms of its attack stats at 100 overall, but the rest of its stats leave a lot to be desired. After that, it's 100 in attack and special attack. Really only needs one of those to be good. And it's got 73 HP and everything else is in the 60s. It's not that good. Next up. Lunatone and Soul Rock, they are going to be basically in the same tier, both in the bad tier. I think that they really um, leave a lot to be desired. Having Levitate is cool. Being a rock that's not weak to ground is nice. Having access to um, the rocks is sure, whatever. I just think that they're missing something. Their coverages are fine. I just think that typing move pool is just not enough to get by with his bad stats. Next up is Barboach. And then we have the Whiskash. Whiskash will go into bad tier as well. I'm not really ordering the bad tier because like it's... It's fine. It's it's yeah. I, I, like, I'd rather have Trap Inch ahead of like 90% of these Pokemon, but I don't. Either way, um, Whiskash I was talking about, Dragon Ants, but it's slow is the issue. I'd rather have like any other water ground thing than Whiskash. Corefish over here. Crawdont. We're going to see Crawdont in the... I'll put Crawdont in Solid, at the top of Solid. The reason why I'm not putting it higher is because it's slow. Uh, that's why. But with Dragon Ants or with Swords Dance, it can break through a team exceptionally well. Having access to, uh, to Knock Off and Liquidation, having access to uh, Adaptability on those obviously is fantastic. In Trick Room, it's great. The issue is just it's slow, and you're not always going to have the ability to get your Trick Room up and make sure that you're going to be consistently, um, consistently breaking through teams the way you really want it to. That's the main. That's the main gripe I have with something like the, uh, like the Crawdons, really. Uh, next up, we're going to see the. Where is it? Oh my God, I'm scrolling down. There we go. Baltoy and Claydol. So Baltoy over here, Claydol. Claydol. So Claydol is on, uh, honestly below average. I don't think Claydol is bad anymore. I used to think Claydol was absolutely terrible, but I believe Clay, I believe Claydol has some of the best coverage out there for a, um, a ground type, which is obviously great. And on top of that, it gets teleport. Not many ground type Pokemon get momentum moves. And that's why I like it here. It also gets levitate. It is a, a, a resist to Edgequake, which is a really big deal when it comes to team building because Edgequake coverage, Stone Edge and Earthquake or Rock moves and Ground moves are really good options to pair together. And having an, a resist to both them or an immunity to one resist the other is really nice. And also it happens to get Ice Beam, which is again, really good to be able to hit the, uh, the ground types that are going for it. Uh, and then grass on as well to hit the rock types going for the rock type attacks too. So it's a really good answer to those things there. Rabbit Spin as well. And of course, self rocks too. Just good utility. Uh, Anorith over here. No, Anorith, no, this is Lily. Lily over there. And Anorith also over here uh, with the Cradilly. We'll put in the. I'll put Cradilly below average, just below that. Uh, I think again, I'd rather Cradilly over everything in this tier here because it just, you know, has an immunity to water, uh, has rocks, has access to solid coverage as well, recovery. I think it just makes sense there. Uh, Armaldo. Armaldo, I will put into the. I'll put it all into the top of bad. I think it's not below average. I think it's on the same level as a lot of these Pokemon here, but having access to, again, good coverage as well. Having access to rocks is nice. It just it can do a good amount of things. The issue is just it loses out a bit for me because it's typing a bug and rock is really bad. If it was something like fighting and rock for some reason, I think that'd be a lot better than bug and rock, of course. Next up is going to be Feebas, obviously at the bottom of bad and then Milotic. My mascot, uh, I'm going to put my Lodic into the solid tier, but I'll put it like this. The uh, reason being is it's kind of, especially now in Generation 8, where we have boots and everything like that, um, my Lodic can really appreciate running boots. However, it really wants to run a Flame Orb to get the, the, the burn off on it so it can activate its Marvel scale to, to boost its defense. But it can't do that consistently unless it has the Flame Orb. Also, it has to worry about Toxic on the switch in. And on top of that, it's now losing 6% every turn, so it's, its HP is artificially getting reduced because of that. The thing that makes it worst out of all this, you could be running leftovers. So the difference really is a net neutral loss of 12%. 6% from leftovers, 6% from burns. 12% every turn that you could have had that you don't now. That hurts a lot. Uh, and that's why I think I would not draft it anymore over something like Vaporeon. Um, it, yeah, it's it's fine, but 
I can't put it higher. I, I, I just wish I could, but I can't. Next up is going to be cast form and all the cast form forms can go sit right here in the bad tier. Goodbye. 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 They should have gotten a boost in stats, but they don't. Kecleon can go also into the bad tier. I don't really care where I put it, to be honest. Uh, but it, it does it has protein, which is nice, has decent coverage. It's got good special defense, which is fine. But uh, I just wish it had access to a bit more into the stats. That's really the main thing. Uh, Shuppets can go into the LC mods. Banets can go into the bad tier. It's really not that great. But Prankster, Mega, Banet will go into the solid tier. Uh, I think it's actually better than this. I think it's... Is it better than Mega Sceptile? I think it is. Yeah. I, I think the reason why I like Banet so much is because Prankster, obviously. Having access to Prankster Destiny Bond is very tough to prep around, tough to deal with. Having access to Shadow Claw and Shadow Sneak, obviously, is an issue as well. It's got decent coverage options, like Gung Shot to deal with Fairy Types. It's nice. Knock Off is cool as well. Pranks, Prankster Taunt and Prankster will wisp all are really good things as well. Uh, Prankster really definitely makes Banet a lot scarier. And having a, also one of, the, one of the coolest designs, in my opinion, for a Mega Pokemon absolutely goes to Prankster Banet. Next up, we're going to see the Duskull over here in LC. Dusclops is going to be in below average. If this is going to be something like a uh, VGC League, I get it. Sure, toss it up here into Amazing or Great. But no, this is going to be below average. It is a, it is a fine Pokemon. I think it's actually worse than Rosalia, than Rosalia because in singles, it's a lot easier to prep around than it is in doubles. So I'm not as worried about it. And Knockoff is so prevalent in the game that this Pokemon really relies on it. It's a weak two on top of that. It hurts. Uh, while Roselia has access to recovery moves like Synthesis, Dusclop does not. Next up is Tropius. Bad. Chimeco. Also bad. Absol. Also bad. These Pokemon, they, they, they're not even below average. They're just bad Pokemon. Like, they don't really do anything for a team at all. Next up is going to be the Mega Absol, which I'll put Mega Absol up into the Great tier, is what I'm going to do. I'll put it below this. It's got like 150 base speed or something, Mega Absol. It's, it's insanely fast for like no fucking reason at all. It's got... Uh, why did I say 150? It's about 150 in speed. It's, it should not even then. It should not be that fast. But it's got 150 attack. That must have been what I was thinking of. With magic bounce. So no taunts, no will-o'-wisps, no toxics, no thunder waves, nothing like that. And oh, you want to go for rocks? Mega Absol comes in, bounces them back to you. Really good. Clicks Swords Dance and then clicks just basically anything it wants to the entire time. It is a glass cannon. And I love that. I love that. I think it's really cool that's a glass cannon here because it just does it really well. Better than basically any other Pokemon that does this job on this list here. It is an amazing glass cannon. That's what it does, and it does it fantastically. Next up is going to be uh why not? Nope. Snorunt. Nope. Glalie. Uh I mean bad. Yeah. It gets spikes, I guess. It gets, it gets spikes. It gets spikes. Put it on top here. It gets spikes. Uh Mega Glalie. In the below average tier. I'll put it above this one here. I'll put it actually like this. Uh refrigerate. Great ability. Double edge, body slam, crunch, uh, earthquake, all these things they are really nice. Spikes, of course, explosion. Uh, but that's really it. And its stats are just not as good as it needs to be. I believe Glalie's overall are based like 80 all around, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Glalie has uh, 80 all around. So Mega Glalie has 120 in its attack, special attack, and speed. So it gets boosted there, but its typing is pure ice. That's a terrible typing. It's really bad. Either way, moving on is going to be Sfeel, Celio, and Walrene. They can all go over here in the bad Vananafees and LC Mons. Also, Clam Pearl is actually at the top, near the top of rather of uh, this tier. I think it's a solid Pokemon overall because it gets access to like the deep sea, choose the deep sea scale to like boost its stats. And with Shell Smash, it's obviously good. Huntail and Gorbis. Huntail is, in my, thing, in my opinion, worse than Gorbis is. So put Gorbis into the uh, below average and Huntail into the bad tier. Um, the physical is worse than being special and having access to like psychic coverage that Gorbis gets is really nice too. Next up is going to be Relicanth, which I'll put into the bad tier. Uh, I know that people are going to kill me for that because Relicanth is. No, Relic God, but it's uh, it's just it's not all that. It's bulky, it hits hard, but that's really all it does, and it doesn't do it that well, to be honest. Love Disc, bad. Fagon, LC, Shellgon, bad NFE. Salamence. Oh, how I wish I could put Salamence in the amazing tier. I wish I could put Salamence here. I can't. I cannot. I'll put Salamence over here. Um, Salamence took a step back in this generation. Yes, Hidden Power Ice is gone now, but, and yes, there is Boots. But there is basically so many other Pokemon and so many other dragons that you'd rather use than Salamence. So I'm gonna put it over here in the great tier and onto the amazing tier. But Mega Salamence, oh, Mega Salamence, yeah, come on, come on up. Join the Mega tier. Go, oh, you, oh, you wanna be higher than Mega Blaziken? Sure, you wanna be higher than Blaziken? Sure. We have a new king of Hoenn. That's gonna be the Mega Salamence. I do believe that this Pokemon is the best Pokemon in Hoenn as of this time here. We might see if uh, something else might 
dump on the list. But either way, having Mega Salamence up here is great. It has Air Late with like Double Edge and like I think it's Body Slam too, but definitely has Hyper Voice as well. So like special flying moves is amazing. Having access to like fire moves for the steel types and ground moves for the steel types is really good as well. It's got great speed at like 120, can Dragon Dance, can Roost, it can do so many different things. The only downside is you can't run and boost on this Pokemon, but I really, really like Mega Salamence. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. One of the best designs too. Beldum. Yep. Betang. Metang actually I've seen drafted. Uh, Metang could do some work in certain situations. It's just bulky against rocks. That's really it. it. Has decent coverage, but yeah. Metagross. Metagross up into the solid tier. I think Metagross. I'd rather have it like. I don't have Metagross like. Uh... Yeah, I like this. I'd say um, as a psychic type, I think it's better than Gardevoir. I think is it the best psychic type in this generation? No, but it is still a good psychic type nonetheless. Uh, it gets access to a really good coverage options. Gets rocks. Gets access to cosmic power and body press nowadays, which is cool. It, there's a lot of good things going for. I do think uh, that Metagross should be up high on this list. With Meta, Meta, with Meta, well, with Mega Metagross, there we go. Following up here into the uh, the Ubers tier, I think that uh, Tough Claws boosted attacks are obviously really good. Uh, how we want to rank these, I, I think I want to keep it like this. I do like ah, I'll put this a bit higher. I think I put it like this. Uh, it's really good. It's got really good speed. It's like 110 speed for like no goddamn reason at all. I, I better be around that 110 speed. Uh, Metagross, Metagross. There we go. Um, yeah, so 110 speed for no reason. Its lowest spat, stat is its HP at 80. Its lowest attacking stat or other stat is 105 in special attack. Like, it, it's got ridiculous stats for no reason. Tough Claws boosted Bullet Punch or Meteor Mash or Zen Headbutt are insanely strong. There is really no consistent answer for Mega Metagross. I love this Pokemon a lot. I just wish it didn't have that spike on its, uh, like, face, like a little spike goatee. Either way, moving on is going to be the Regis. Okay. We're finally into the legendary legendaries of this generation. So we're gonna have Regirock, which will go into the below average. We're gonna have Registeel go into the or is it solid? There we go. Solid. And we're gonna have Regice go into the bad. So I think that Regice has some utility. It's my favorite of the Regis growing up, uh, because it's a good special attacker. I like special attacking Pokemon. The issue is its typing is dog shit. Uh yeah, it's also I wish it had like 200 special attack instead of 200 special defense, but hey, what are you gonna do? Then you have Regirock. Regirock at base, what, 120 in its special defense is in our physical defense. No, 200 in its defense. I don't know why I said 120. I don't know why I said special defense. Whatever. Base 200 in its defense is fine. It's a decent counter to flying type Pokemon, which is great and everything because it's got really good defense and it's not really going to die to Earthquake because of its massive defense stat. It's access to Rocks, Thunder Wave, um, Earthquake, Body Press, all these things. But all that being said, I think I'd rather have a lot of other Pokemon, but it still would be higher than majority of these. I'd put it like um yeah i put it here i think uh where, there we go just below subtile yeah i think i like red rock a lot and then red steel i'm not a fan of red steel overall i'm not a fan of bronze on overall but i can't deny that red steel is definitely the best of all the reggies 100 there there's no doubt about that at all what it does for a team is it gets rocks it gets access to setup options it can be really annoying to deal with too clear body is nice can't be toxic like the other reggies which is cool as well and it's got really well balanced defensive stats 150 in each is amazing it's, it obviously is but you have to decide which one is best in every matchup, which is important to note. Moving on, we're going to see a Latias. So Latias is going to be in the great tier. Obviously, Latias is really good, but it has taken a step back in this generation. That's because Latios has taken a step forward. I'm playing Latios in the amazing tier. I think Latios is just awesome. I think Latios is one of the best Pokemon in a regular competitive league that is not including like Ubers. And these Pokemon here, a lot of them are Ubers, but I think Latios should still be up here. It is in my mind better than Mega Gardevoir and better than Salamence. Having access to, again, really good speed, Defog, Baton Pass now for Momentum, Mystical Fire, Forest Spirits to deal with these uh, the Dark types and the uh, Steel types coming around with really good coverage like Surf and Thunderbolt and access to like Psy Shock and Psychic and Drago Beanie and all these things. It's a lot better than Latias. Latias has more support moves than Latios does, but Latias is a better set of Pokemon than Latios unless it's like the weakness policy agility set. Yeah. Next up, Mega Latias will go into the Amazing tier. Mega Latios will also go into the Amazing tier. Both of them really, really good. I'd rather have the uh, the item availability, but I get the appeal for these Pokemon. If they were faster, if they were like 115 or 120, I would put them above, but they're the same speed. I think that's a, a missed opportunity for uh, for Nintendo and Game Freak. Game Freak. Next up is Kyogre. Okay, let's make a new tier. Let's make a new tier because we have to do that. We're going to make a new tier. We're going to go up here. We're going to go call this and put them in black. Oh, let's go back here. We're going to put this over here. We're going to add row above. Close this. We're going to call this Broken Ass Legends. I'm going to put this in black. And you can't see it now because okay, so we're going to put it in purple. I don't know. Purple works. Okay. Uh, Kyogre. Have fun in this tier. Primal Kyogre. 
Also, have fun in this tier. Route on. You're actually, you're not going to go into Broken Ass Legends. You're going to go into Amazing. Okay? You're going to go into Amazing. I think you're really good. I don't think you're a Broken Ass Legend, though. Primal Groudon. Yeah, you're going to go into the Broken Ass Legends, though. Yeah, 100%. So, here's the thing. Rain is better than Sun. We understand that. Having access to Water Spell boosted attacks that are stabbed, stab, okay, and like Groudon, which is not stab, is amazing. It's got great typing, great coverage, great stats, great ability. Everything about it is amazing. It belongs in the broke ass, Broken Ass Legends. Then we have the Primal Calgar. All the same things, but it's better. Well, no, it, it can't hold the item, but I think it is close to being better. I would rather have regular Calgar over Primal Calgar, uh, but I do get the appeal for Primal Calgar because Primal Calgar is just a lot stronger and just like negates all the weather, uh, which is greater than its, its own. Um, and the, the, you, the problem is you can't really pair with like a rain team because you lose the weather as soon as it leaves the field, which is something. Uh, and then you have Primal Groudon, which does basically the same thing, but with Sun. It is a fire type now, which is cool because you get to get stab off those attacks. And it's just so, so damn bulky. Uh, I really like both all these Pokemon a lot. I think these are the main ones that are going to be in this tier here. Obviously, there's a pretty notable one down that we're missing, but we're going to talk about that later. Here's Rayquaza. Rayquaza will be up in the amazing tier. Um, all these Pokemon here, I would consider to be like Uber-ish, um, at least. And Rayquaza is great, but I will put it up higher. You know what? I think... Yeah, I, I would keep this over here. I honestly... Like, I have low opinions of the Mega Laddies, but I do think that these, these tiers make some sense to me. I'd rather have it like this than uh, put these three here down into the great tier. Next up is Mega Ray. Mega Ray at the top, and I feel like I need to create another tier as well. And I'm going to call it Mega Ray. So add row above, we're going to call it uh, Mega Ray. And this will go up here, and this will put into a pink color. And yeah, uh, that Pokemon's gonna stay there. This Pokemon should not be legal. It is disgustingly broken. It makes no sense why it's legal in any format. It is disgusting. Next up, Jirachi. I think Jirachi is at the bottom of at the bottom of greats. I don't think uh, no, not bottom of great. What I'm saying, I want I, no. It's gonna be at the top of greats ish. Yeah, we'll put it like this. I think that Jirachi is great, but it is also bad. I have a very much hate hate relationship with Jirachi. The fact that it misses Thunder Waves in my playoff games and my championship games that cost me titles, but it I can't deny it as a steel type. It is fine. I just think it's not as good as it needs to be really, and it could it's missing a lot of things. If you want to hear more thoughts on Jirachi, I posted a video on Sunday uh, that would be talking about Jirachi and underrated Pokemon. So make sure to go check that thing out. Next up, we're gonna see the Deoxys. This is regular Deoxys, which I'm gonna put into the uh, Broke Ass Legends. I believe is what I want to do. Broke Ass Legends. I think I'll do Broadcast Legends. For, no, not Broadcast Legends. I'm going to put this in Amazing. I'm going to put this attack into Amazing. I'm going to put the Defense into Great. I'm going to put the Speed into Amazing at the bottom, though. Um, I don't have as much respect for Deoxys Speed as a, other, as a lot of other people, but I do get the appeal for it because you can invest a lot of uh, HP rather than Defense uh, or Speed, and you can take advantage of that way, and you can still be really offensive. Uh, Deoxys attack is just an absolute monster and is so hard to deal with. Same thing with Deoxys normal. Uh, Deoxys defense is just taunted, taunt fodder. Um, it misses a lot. And the, the fact that it relies a lot on like Nightshade and like knockoff as its moves, it's just, it, it performs a different role. That's really it. It performs a different role. I just think that role, it doesn't do its job as well as Pokemon like Dio speed, attack, or normal. But yeah, guys, that is it. That is our tier list. That is the entire thing for gen number three for Hoenn. If you guys enjoyed this tier list, make sure to leave a like on the video. Let me know your thoughts on down below. We're reading. We're looking for 50 likes on today's video. So you guys did enjoy it. Make sure to smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We are on the road to 2,000 subscribers. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are being released in 10 days. If you are excited, guys, let me know down in the comments below. And that's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all next time.